I'm about to take you on a journey through a truly amazing garden. It encapsulates the 21st century trend, just like a snapshot in time. It celebrates them like no other that I've ever experienced. And the end result is truly spectacular. Set high above Kangaroo Valley in New South Wales, we're about to explore Uralba Estate and just find out why this property is so unique and the garden is so magical. Commanding over 80 hectares of lush landscape and uninterrupted views of the stunning Morton National Park, Uralba really is an exclusive country estate. Nothing in this garden is sort of normal or traditional. Take this Wisteria Arbor. Firstly, it's on a, a beautiful arc. So as you enter, you can't see the end, so it takes you on a journey. Very clever, it's not straight. Yes, they've got the pillars every six or seven metres apart, a little bit different on the, on the outside of the arc or the curve. But where's the timber, the heavy timber structures to hold the whole wisteria up? They're not here. So what is it that's keeping it <laughs> horizontal? Stainless steel cables, and they're stretched between each of the pillars. In spring, because there are no heavy timber beams, the wisteria flowers will just hang down. It'll be so light, magical. I often get asked if there are alternatives to lily pillies for hedges if you don't want flowers. Well, podocarpus are brilliant especially the small leaf ones like this fellow here, which is Podocarpus Mackey, M-A-K-I, it's from Asia. And it's a brilliant plant as a hedge, dense for screening, wind protection, privacy, and it's got some fruit on it, you can see there. But it being a cultivar, very likely would revert back, but it's just a beautiful plant. Podocarpus Mackey, put it on your list. This is the amoeba garden, and that is the burrowed landscape. Isn't it beautiful? Drawn right into the garden. But I've never seen an example where the burrowed landscape has actually been mimicked, copied, and it transcends into a whole new landscape down here, where that shape is copied at, at human scale. Let's find the man who actually planted these shrubs 13 years ago. I knew, I knew I'd catch you hard at work. <laughs> How's it going? Good, thanks, Graham. How are you? I'm good, mate. This is a never-ending job, isn't it? How much time does it take to do all this hedge? Oh, probably uh, a couple of hours a fortnight. A couple of hours a yeah, fortnight? Yeah, yeah, Gee, yeah. you work pretty yeah, smartly. Yeah. And it's a great concept, isn't it? Because there's the mountain, that's the shape. And it's just duplicated. Was that the design originally? It was a design, yeah. It's designed as an amoeba. Yeah. Um, but it's just mutated over time and changed shapes. And um, so, yeah, it does replicate the, the mountains on both sides. I guess from, from above, you can actually see the amoeba shape more clearly than down here at the ground level, which is rather clever because it's a bird's eye view. That's right, Graham, which, yeah. Which is beautiful. But down here on the ground level, how do you keep the shape? Or does, is it organic and it does change? It's organic. It changes all the time. Isn't so that yeah, brilliant? you have different heights and uh, different grooves and um, crevices. Yeah, but it's changing. I, is it hard? Would would people at home be able to give the, uh, something like this a shot? Uh, no, it is difficult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of ten? Uh, a ten. Yeah, oh, yeah, a yeah, ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that, that is hard. Okay. Yeah. Now this is Eliagnus. Which species is it? The smaller mounds are, are pungens, and the larger mounds are macrophylla. The rest of the garden, it's an enormous adventure, isn't it? It so is. Can you ever get ahead, or is it, in fact, like painting the Harbour Bridge? <laughs> you, you get to one end and you've got to start. Yep, yep, we've always got to start. So, yeah. yeah, as soon as we finish, we're hedging again. Here, the planting has changed quite dramatically to native. Up close to the house, it's Banksia ericifolia. And these cones of bright orangey red are standing up. But I just love this informal grove of Australian native trees. We don't use it enough to have a, a, a planting of Australian natives. In this case, it's Eucalyptus maculata, the local spotted gum.
there's actually a bit of a colour theme happening here, but it's not riotous colour, it's soft, gentle colour. Along with the greens, they've got the greys. And of course the euphorbia, look at the way the mist and the moisture sitting on those leaves, isn't it glorious? And then there's Helichrys and Petiolea, which is a really soft, gentle grey. So with grey, you can't beat silver. And of course, when it comes to silver and trunks, it's got to be silver birch. Now, this is not just a grove of silver birch. It's so much more than that. Here in the cooler regions, the silver birch are just beautiful and they'll grow to be even bigger and better trees over time. But there's actually almost a metre fall from up high down to the top of the wall. So, in fact, they've actually camouflaged that embankment by these beautiful swales and movement, the pathway actually indicates that there is quite a big drop. This area here is the central garden because the house rooms and the living rooms look into it and the planting tends to reproduce the amoeba plantings, these clipped mounds, irregular shapes and sizes. Westringia, the native Westringia at the front and then the Viburnum tinus at the back. There used to be a swimming pool here, but to keep the landscape simple and a bit of a Japanese feel to it, basic and not overdone, they've taken the pool out. So you can just have this wide expanse. Some gums have been planted, there's a green wall and these little puffs of, of helichrysum all the way through, taking you back to a little box of, of slate, which is just so simple and clever because it reproduces the grey of the foliage and of the paintwork and the decor of the building itself. <laughs> Nick, look at this. Hi. What a classic. Isn't it brilliant? It is beautiful. A completely enclosed little kitchen garden. And obviously that's the kitchen just there. Yep, straight through that door. Yeah, couldn't have any closer than that, could you? I know, we're pretty spoiled. So what, what have you got growing here? So we have a lot of soft herbs here. We have uh, parsleys, tarragons, oregano. We also have lemongrasses, rosemary, pretty much any herb you'll find in this garden. Right. But I can feel the heat coming from the pizza oven, so it, it's yeah. obviously a, a really working kitchen garden, which is great. It is, and we also dine out here as well, our fresco. So the idea was to, you know, the pizza comes out of the pizza oven onto the table, you can pick fresh herbs and put it on your food. So Straight very away. interactive, yeah. Isn't that great? What have you got on the menu today? Well, today we've got a seared rump cap and some char-grilled broccolini and some beautiful fresh seasonal jack pumpkin with a, a, a miso and tahini dressing. Isn't it beautiful? I love the nuts on the top of that. Now, you're the estate manager. What was it like in the beginnings here 13 years ago? Uh, it was a complete change to what I was used to cooking on the private yachts, um, but it was actually a, a nice transition because it was at the start of the whole um, farm to fork, paddock to plate movement. A long way from the, a galley long and a ship. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Well, what a journey it's been. I just love so many of the features, but the one that really stands out for me is the way they're caring for the trees, in particular, the native gums. And of course, the silver birch, they'll all grow into beautiful trees, exotic and native in one landscape. This amazing, magical estate in Kangaroo Valley is a very special place.